Hi, my name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. It is already the beginning of April, which means it's time for another empties video. You'll have to forgive, you'll have to forgive the hot mess that's back here on this wall. My son, Oliver, is really obsessed with coloring on the walls right now. Just pretend it's not there. Um, but before we get into anything further, let me tell you what I'm drinking. Sparkling Sangria from David's Tea. I don't think that this is a blend that they currently have on their website right now, or maybe it's a discontinued tea, but this is a blend of apple, papaya, mango, pineapple, hibiscus, blue cornflowers, rose petals, and artificial passion fruit flavoring. I've basically been avoiding this blend um, because it just did not sound like anything that I would have appreciated. But luckily, <laughs> I actually really liked it. It's sweet and fruity. The tartness is not, is not that intense, probably because hibiscus is further down on the, on the list. And then there is like a really nice, subtle floral flavor that's coming through as well. I don't know if I necessarily pick it up as rose. It's just something nice and, and floral. Kind of surprised that I like this one because I don't really care for sangria. But yeah, if they ever bring this back, it's worth checking out. And now let's get into my empties. So the first one is this minty green tea. Uh, and this was from a gift box that I received many moons ago. I think it's a Trader Joe, Trader Joe's brand. I didn't really care for this. I thought the green tea was, well, and it could have also been the mint, but I thought it was really bitter. And overall, I would say for a grocery store brand, that Trader Joe's, that Trader Joe's sampler was pretty good. Most of my experiences with the teas in that sampler were, were good. I just I just didn't really care for this one, but that's just personal preference. I never would have picked up a minty green tea really anyways. Next, we have this cozy cotton candy from Adagio Teas. This is from their Tinsel Teas collection. I keep mentioning in, in my empties videos that I am not, I was not that big of a fan of their Tinsel Teas collection. Um, compared to their Wicked Tea Sampler. Like this just didn't even compare to, their, to, the, to how good the Wicked Tea Sampler was. Um, I think this was, if my memory serves me, it's a black tea with mint or candy cane flavoring. Uh, do I wanna say that there was some like cream in this? I kinda think so. This was really, really addictive. Um, this is one that I actually would get a bigger bag of next holiday season. It just was, it was, it was that tasty. The next blend that I tried was this Averic blend. This is one of the fandom teas. It is, it is the Dragon Age fandom, which is one of my favorite video game series of all times. Like I, I replay that series so often. And Varric is one of my favorite characters. This is a blend of toasted mate, mocha nut mate, spiced apple chai, cocoa nibs, red peppercorn, and ginger. I don't think that I really noticed the, the spiced apple chai coming through. For me, this was more spiced chai with toasted mate and cocoa notes. I'm not normally a fan of mate, but this wasn't bad. Necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily reorder it, but <laughs> I'm really happy that I have the tin. I don't think I can bring myself to throw this away because the artwork on this is really cool. I also sipped through this rooibos orange from Adagio Teas and I didn't like this. If you're not careful in how you steep rooibos, it can, it can be kind of medicinal flavored and then add to that orange flavoring. And this just tasted like cough syrup to me. Like just, I, mm -mm. Nope. The last flavored blend that I have is bergamot kisses from David's Tea and I didn't like this one either. So this is a blend of black tea, candied papaya, chocolate, white chocolate, apple, cocoa, caramel pieces, rose buds, rose leaves, vanilla, stevia extract, natural chocolate and bergamot flavoring. I think this was good in theory, but the execution was off. The stevia and the white chocolate were just cloyingly sweet um, this this was hard to drink because it was just so so sweet 
Also, I don't really like the flavor of stevia. I don't think I realized when I purchased this that this had stevia in it. Uh, but yeah, I, I once if once I know that stevia is in a blend, I just I just tend to avoid it because I I don't like that flavor. I also thought that this was a very flavoring forward blend, and. Uh, I just, I just really, I, I didn't taste any of the tea at all. Like I, and I really just kind of missed that. Okay, now on to probably my favorite teas of the month. I, I made a purchase from White Two Tea at the beginning of the year, at the very end of last year, and I, they threw in like a couple free samples, and this was one of them. It took me forever to figure out what this was because it wasn't labeled, it wasn't on the shipping uh, inventory and I just had to basically click through their entire website to figure out what this was. This is their Dangerfield, their 2019 Dangerfield, and it was just a little pressed coin. So this is a, this is a raw puer, um, and I really liked this. The initial infusions were dried apricots, and there was an indulgent sweetness that just sort of lingers at the back of my throat. I mean, it just tastes like you're sucking on a sugar cube. It's it's such an interesting experience. And then around infusion four, it shifted to some floral aromas. Then for infusions five through 11, it shifted back to stone fruit, and then also something that was uh, faintly vegetal. Uh, it was really, really nice. This was a lot more approachable than the raw puer that I tried from Master's Teas and that was the first raw puer I ever tried. Uh, that one was, that one, that one I, I liked it, but I fought it for probably the first five infusions because it was so astringent. This was not as intense. Um, also, I, I found, <laughs> These these affect me physically, um, the these raw puers, and it's and I find myself chasing that sensation when I drank the raw puer from Masters Teas. Uh, that sensation hit me pretty hard in Infusion Three. This one was sort of like a slow burn. I almost didn't think it was gonna happen, but finally around Infusion Ten it happened, and so my notes on that are: my body felt overwarm and it felt like there was TV static in my cheeks, and my eyes felt dry and really tired, and even though this has plenty of caffeine in it, I just wanted to, to, to just sit on the couch and do absolutely nothing. I mean, this just made me just into like a puddle, but like a really good puddle. The next three are from uh, one of my favorite tea vendors that I discovered last year. Um, if you've not tried them, I really recommend them because I, everything that I've had from them is really good. The first ones I'm going to talk about are their Lapsang Souchongs. I'm sure you are familiar with Lapsang Souchong being this being a smoky tea. It tastes like, like a campfire to a lot of people. But they also have unsmoked Lapsang Souchong, which I did not know was a thing until, until I discovered Crafted Leaf Teas. So, um, the first one, I actually don't have any tasting notes for, and it's this 2019 Ancient Spring Lapsang Souchong. It was just delicious. The other one is this uh, 2019, 2019 Spring Ruby Lapsang Souchong, and I'm gonna insert a picture because this one was presented really interestingly. Uh, this was tied up into the shape of a diamond, um, and it was, I read that it, it's formed that way specifically because the leaves are delicate and, and it's a way to protect the leaves. But this just was so fun to steep and explore with just because it was just such a beautiful looking tea. Um, Flavor-wise, it was just amazing as well. So the, so the initial infusions offered the savory sweet aroma of roasted sweet potato, and then towards the later infusions, it was the subtle grassy floral aroma of those purple hon honeysuckle clovers. I guess I don't know if they're actually called honeysuckle, but it's those purple clovers. You can pluck the little purple petals out and like lick the ends of it and you can taste the nectar or the sugar, I guess, that, that's, in the that's in the clover. Um, but yeah, uh, this, this, is probably, this is probably one of the favorite teas that I tried 
in the month of March. If you if you're not a fan of Lapsang Souchong because it's smoky, I would try this. It's unsmoked and it's amazing. The last tea from uh, Crafted Leaf that I tried or drank through this month was their Ancient Bush Milan da Milan Dankong. Uh, or like this is a this is the honey orchid oolong. So the uh, initial infusion is honey and malt tea, and the following infusions become very floral, like very floral. Um, this <laughs> this next description is probably going to be lost on all of my viewers, but um, this the middle infusions uh, reminds me of Hop Slam from Bell's Brewery, and that is a um, an American Imperial IPA that has like these really bold floral aromas, but has like this interesting honey malty uh, undertone after note. Uh, it's 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 quite good. But in general, in general, these Milan Dan Kongs taste taste like IPA and those those like infusions three and four for some reason. Um, so I, I really liked this. This is probably um, the strongest, the strongest uh, honey orchid oolong that I've had. Um, and I, I would say, I mean, I think you have to be a fan of floral aromas to appreciate this one. I happen to really appreciate floral aroma, so it works for me. And then the last tea that I tried is this Bai Yi from, uh, so well, on, on Instagram, they are Wudong Tea, and then their actual website, I think, is like Chao Zhu Tea Grower, and these were free samples. I just had to pay for shipping. Initially, this reminded me of the Honey Orchid Oolong, but just like significantly more subtle. And then in the last couple infusions, some peach notes surfaced that kind of transformed into to a more floral lychee flavor. I mean, overall, this was actually, this, this was a really nice tea as well. Um, this is another, another tea that I would love to try more of um, and and maybe even from different vendors so yeah uh, that that was my that was my month of March the empties from the month of March my favorites were basically anything from crafted leaf teas especially those unsmoked lapsang souchongs I love their unsmoked lapsang souchong I go to crafted leaf tea specifically to buy unsmoked lapsang souchong. I mean, that's how much I love, that's how much I love. That's how much I love crafted leaf teas and that's how much I love that specific kind of tea. So yeah, anything from, basically anything from crafted leaf teas this month was my favorite. This one was also really good, I liked it. Did you guys have any favorites during the month of March? If you did, let me know about it in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.